the idea of using the dollar index. Is it useful like when I look at the Forex market, like if the dollar is going higher, obviously that's going to put pressure on the foreign currencies and it'll be less likely for them to have sustained rallies. They're more likely to have sustained declines. So dollar up, foreign currency down. Dollar down, foreign currency up. Uh, the reason why that's occurring is it's a risk on risk off scenario. Dollar, if it is going up as we have here, this is a risk off scenario. Okay, risk off scenario implies that generally every other market or asset class will start to decline. And this is treated as like a flight to quality, okay, or a safe haven. So money pours into the dollar and it pours out of risk assets. That would be like foreign currency. That's why I've been telling you to look at the euro dollar to go lower and make a new low on this daily chart. And today it did it. And now it's random. And then also this applies as well to the stock market and index market. So obviously I'm kind of like pushing the index futures in this mentorship on YouTube, but it's applicable. Obviously everything I'm teaching here is universal. So it works in everything. Now I'm not co-signing crypto as a reminder. I do not trade cryptocurrency. I have absolutely zero experience trading cryptocurrency outside of a demo account or a paper trading account. I've never done anything with it. I've never opened up a crypto account. I have no interest in ever going into that asset class and there it is. Okay. I, I see a lot of you asking that in the comment section. So I'm going to try to throw this out there every now and then as a reminder, because <laughs> I don't do anything with that asset class. I have a lot of students that trade them and they swear by my concepts working there, but I personally don't do it. Okay. So there's that. Uh, I am a Forex and futures trader. So that way you guys can know what my specialty is. And I want to show you this chart here and remind you of what I mentioned in the previous week in our meetings together in the episodes, I said that we would likely see the dollar index drop down. If I was making the market for the dollar, I would see it go down to around 99.92. You can go back and listen to the videos and it'll obviously just, you'll see it. It's there and hear it. Then I said I would run the relative equal highs and start to run it higher. I gave you the objectives of relative equal highs and mentioned like 102, 103, and you know, even my private mentorship group knows those objectives as well. And we have it here. Okay. So I'll leave it up to you whether or not you find this inspiring or not, knowing that this was likely to occur for a London setup and then rally higher. I want you to look at the relationship between this price move here and go back in the commentary where I was referring to that daily bearish order block on the index feature. Okay, so I was talking about the, the low of the daily order block, the open of the order block, and the mean threshold halfway, and then the high of the order block being the less likely level we traded to. And I'll talk about that when we get into the E-mini S&P portion of this episode. But for now, let's take a look at what the relationship looks like with the dollar versus the E-mini S&P. So this is the June contract for 2022 of the E-mini S&P futures market. And you can see as the dollar creates its important low that I called publicly, you guys know it, I've said it, I've explained it to you in detail. As this dollar was going higher, what was going on in the E-mini S&P? See that inverted relationship there? That's why if you go back and listen to the recording, when I was talking about that bearish order block on the E-mini S&P, I said that we're going into May and it's usually a seasonal decline. And I'm going to be looking for signatures to warrant downward pressure in this particular asset class and reaching for those relative equal lows on the daily chart. Hello, look at your chart, folks. This is this is what it's like to be mentored. This is what it's like to know what's likely to occur with tools that make sense. There's nothing ambiguous here. There's nothing, you know, splattered across the chart. It's this simple sound logic. Okay. I'm hopefully inspiring you to simplify which many on the outside looking at what I do will make snide remarks like oh he overcomplicates things and I'm not complicating anything these are very simple ideas and it helps you build the idea of bias it gives you intermarket relationships and intermarket analysis to give you the the trust 
Okay, why did I feel you know, confident to publicly say that 99.92 level? Well, I explained that. Why did I think it was going to rally from there? Because I'm bullish on dollar. Why did I hint that we're going to be going lower into the e mini S and P relative equal lows, and as we enter into May, that's a seasonal tendency. So all those factors came together, in my experience of almost 30 years, was used to hint at something for you to study. And if I'm right or if I'm wrong, you get to be a judge. Okay, you get to see and weigh me in the balances. I've laid it out there in your hands. You see right now in this chart what I was forecasting, the reasons why I was doing it, why I said what I said, and why it looks like it does in your chart today. All right, so here's that daily chart, and here's that bearish order block I was referring to. And the high I said is the level we don't look for it to be traded to. And you can see we didn't even get to it there. Okay, so we route up into the order block, and then we had the weakness that was expected as we go into that May month, and we're reaching into these relative equal lows. That's the next draw on liquidity, but for now, again, just keep your study inside this order block that's taught in this YouTube channel, okay? So while it's not a main factor in the model I'm teaching in the mentorship for YouTube here, I leaned on that as a basis for my analysis. Why I felt this was likely to go lower, that's the order block, that's the one that makes the likelihood of the market turning it in this area and then going lower and attacking the sell side below here below the relative equal lows here is next and then this low here so ultimately we're looking for a run below here for the sell side now it might want to go down below here and give a little bit of a retracement if it leaves this portion open that might want to rally from going over here up to there i don't think it would do that personally but it could happen but it's likely to you know, draw into that old low here. Now, how we trade once we get there, that'll be interesting because I don't know if it's gonna accelerate violently to the downside or if we're gonna have a sharp retracement higher. I don't know that, okay? I don't care to know that. Right now, I'm just looking for and submitting to the idea that we're gonna keep drawing down on the daily chart. Each daily candle should be expanding lower and reaching into this area. Okay, that's what I'm expecting. That's my ideal scenario. Now, if you look at the daily range here today, we had a little bit of movement above the previous day. So we rallied above Monday's high and then failed, accelerated to the downside. Fell short of just running below these relative equal lows, but I still believe that's where we're likely to go. Had a little bit of consolidation in here, dropped. Then we had a nice rally in here. Now, admittedly, listen closely, folks, because this is one of those times where I didn't get it right, and I have no problem telling you. I was expecting this to rally just a little bit higher and maybe flirt with that 4320 level. I thought that we could get one more spike up into that, and then I was expecting the rollover and go lower. That did not happen. Okay, so let's go into the lower time frame, 15 minute time frame. Here is the midnight hour, New York time, and the opening price there. Notice we only had one, two little moves above that, and that's a really anemic movement for what I was expecting, a little bit more pronounced rally higher. I wanted to see a little bit of a Judas swing, about 20 handles, 15 handles to that effect, like that, and then break down and create something like this. Okay, but we didn't get it. So some of you may be asking, and I believe it was Michelle, in the comment section mentioned that uh, it didn't appear that power three was in effect today it actually was but sometimes it's really really small little movements like this and it may not be useful to you but what happens is when you enter the London session which we do here on three o'clock in the morning it breaks down relative to New York local time okay so 3 a.m. New York local time there's a lot of folks in the comment section that are referring to and confused about daylight savings time and such. All of that is resolved if you simply just listen to the instructions I gave every single time I mentioned the time aspect. If you use this little area down here in trading view and toggle it to New York, and all you gotta do is by clicking it, a window will pop up, scroll to where it says New York. 
you know, highlight that one, click it, and then you're set. You don't have to worry about it. Don't worry about daylight savings time. Don't worry about you know anything. As long as you are aware of what local time is in New York, set a clock on your computer that always tracks the local time in New York, 24/7, 365 days a year. If you do that, you'll never have any confusion about what you should be doing relative to time. Okay. So if you have a small little movement like this it can throw you off if you're expecting like I was I wanted to see a little bit higher rally so in the morning I was looking for maybe a little poke above here didn't happen we broke down retrace back in bearish order block and the imbalance and spent a little bit of time here and then rolled over right before the 930 opening Okay, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the 8.30 and the 9.30, what times you know, are useful, what are beneficial to your analysis, and what you should be concerned about. Okay, because I know there's a lot of questions about that. But ultimately, we moved into the lunch hour, had a little bit of retracement in here, broke down once more, and then aggressive selling, really aggressive selling into the PM session, into the close of the day. If you look at the opening price at midnight local time, New, I'm sorry, New York midnight local time, that's what this here is. That's that opening price. This price is useful for trading the London session. That's two o'clock and five o'clock in the morning, New York local time. And it helps me frame the power three for the daily range. If I'm bearish, I'm looking for something to rally above that opening price in London. That's my ideal scenario. I'm looking for that personally. As you can see, we really didn't get much of that today. It was extremely heavy and just wilted and went lower. Sometimes that's going to happen, folks. And in this instance, I missed a setup. I don't get in what I'm thinking I'm expecting to see. So I'm human. You're human. You're going to look at something in the chart and you're going to have something that is your favorite model, uh, whatever pattern it is you're looking for. And it may not even be my stuff. You know, say you're just here casually watching. You're probably nodding your head saying, yeah, I've had lots of instances where I was looking for my particular setup and it didn't materialize and it went the other way without me. You're going to miss news. You're going to misinterpret it. You're going to read it wrong. That's going to happen. That's why you have to use a stop loss. That's why you have to be controlled about how many times you go into the marketplace and you also have to have some measure of flexibility and that comes with experience you're not going to always be able to see that this isn't going to go up for you initially it's just going to just wilt and go the other direction so when we get into the 8:30 hour and i have the lines really light here because i want to be able to show where the highs and the lows were on the respective candles so this is the 8:30, and this is the 12 a.m midnight candle at New York. So this is New York and this is midnight New York. So there's a distinction here. The beginning of the day, this is where I look for the daily range power three setup and or the ideal scenario if I'm bearish I want to see something rally above that opening price. If I'm bullish I want to see it decline below that opening price. Okay. That's pretty much the basis for the opening price at midnight. It may not be a factor for you, like it is here. It's not much of a use, you know, for anything except for, well, here it opened and it just basically went lower from there. At 8.30, the same thing. I look for those types of scenarios. I'm now I'm looking for weaker prices. I'm looking for it to trade lower. And does it rally above? the 8.30 opening price. It never does. It's too heavy. It just wilts. Okay, it keeps going lower. Now, the opening price at 8.30, I use that for, again, power three for the New York session. The same thought process that I'm using for the opening price at midnight in New York time, that opening price, if I'm bearish, I want to see a move above that. That's what I dub a Judas swing, a false rally or a suspect rally. I usually like to fade those types of moves. As it goes up, I saw right into it. And it's scary for someone that doesn't understand what you're looking at. But if you know what you're looking for, and it takes a lot of experience and learning and back testing and seeing things, you'll be able to do those types of things over time. 
but that same element of trying to look for a short above that opening price in New York when I'm bearish, I would expect the same thing to happen for the New York session, a rally above that opening price at 830, and then decline. So I'm looking for something to rally above that and fade it, but it isn't doing it today. So now look what's occurring here. This is really important that you understand this part of it. You know that I've been bearish. I've made it public knowledge here. Did we rally above the opening price at midnight? No. Did we rally above the opening price at 8.30? No. And we're bearish. What does that indicate to you? Obviously, with the benefit of hindsight, it's extremely bearish. It can't even rally to a short-term premium above the opening price at key levels and time. So we have an extremely heavy bearish market. So it's not going to give us these stunning little short-term rallies that we can fade. It's just gonna stay heavy and either you get in where you can find small little pockets of imbalance or you miss the move entirely. Now, as it happens today, my wife went on a trip. I had to take her to the airport. I was only able to capture $2,000 worth of movement in the S&P E-mini. That's the only thing I could capture. When I got back, I didn't participate in the afternoon and looking at it now, I missed a really, really huge opportunity. There was no trading whatsoever in the afternoon. My money was made short on the E-mini S&P in the morning session. And that's all I had for today.